and welcome back again we will be solving another problem and this time we have two blocks side by side okay uh, lying on the uh, horizontal surface like this where you have the same material okay so what I mean about it is that the material for block A is the same as the material for block B so if you have different materials what will happen is that the coefficient of friction will be different so in this type of questions let us assume since it's not mentioned, let us make the assumption that both blocks, let's say block A is made out of red pine, and then block B is also made out of red pine wood. The only difference is that this, the shape or the size might be different, causing the, co the coefficient of friction to be the same. However, the total amount of friction will not be the same, or the individual friction force that it is created between the two surfaces are different because of the mass of the blocks. So here, what if you were asked to solve for the value of F in terms of mass and other uh, constant that is available for us? And also, why don't we solve the force of A going to B? The force of A as it is applied to B and at the same time the force of B as it applies on block A. So you have two blocks and block B is pushing block A while block A is being pushed by uh, the force, the applied force and block B. And let's put some condition that the initial velocity is zero, so it means it's motionless or it's at rest, and then the final velocity remains zero. So what does it mean? That we know that both uh, velocity are the same. So we can say that the acceleration, both in our x and y coordinates, so the acceleration along y is zero, and the acceleration along x is also zero, so there's no change in the state of motion, so the acceleration is zero. So it means that whatever summation of forces we have along the y-axis is zero, and summation of forces along the x-axis will also still be zero. So it means that the forces are balanced, creating a state of what we call equilibrium, so there's no change in the state of motion. So first step that we should do is to work on the free body diagram. So free body diagram. Okay, so free body diagram. Now free body diagram, of course, let's draw the imaginary x and y coordinates acting on both block A and block B. And we have this dot right here for block A and a dot for block B. Now in our solution, Let's draw block A, and here's block B. So this is block A, and this is block B. I was about to write that letter B over here, but I realized there are some forces acting along it. So block A and block B. Now, first, that always exists, assuming that this is bigger, okay? Mass of A is bigger than mass of B. There are only two masses, so we can say, let's make the assumption, let M be equivalent to the mass of A, and then lowercase m to be mass of B. You can use, again, subscript, but sometimes having the subscript like this, M sub A and M sub B, is a little bit confusing in a way so that's why using uppercase and lowercase however you must indicate the conditions that you are using in order to be easier for you to remember and at the same time for the person reading your work to have an idea what do you mean by those letters now let's say that we have this force right here maybe a greater because of its size 
So let's make the assumption that it's bigger. So FGA. And then you have normal force will be equivalent since there's no motion going up and down or change in motion along the y-axis. So this is your sub A. That's the reason why I've been saying that sometimes the subscript is too much. But we just have to bear with it from time to time. Now there is a force that's being applied and that is your force F. So that's your force F, which is towards the right. There's also another force acting against the pending motion. It's not moving, it's pending motion, so that's your friction. Let's say our friction force is pending to the left. So this is force of friction. Force of friction at A. And of course, we all know that that's static friction. Also... B is preventing it to move to the right. So there is a slight resistance. So that's your force that is being applied over here. And let's call this one force of B. So block B is forcing it to the left. Okay, so uh, force B is acting against the against uh, block uh, A. Now, let's do the same process with block B, where we have force of gravity or weight along B. And then you have the normal force acting against the weight of block B, and that's normal force of block B, F and B. So now there is force that is being applied here. So A is applying force towards the direction to the right. And let's call this one F of A. Okay, so F A is pushing it there. Now, also, there is pending motion to the right because of the applied force. However, there is also what we call friction force on block B because there is friction between the horizontal plane and the object on top of it which is block B. Now why don't we try to analyze where those two objects so this is your free body diagram so let's analyze this right here so let us analyze, let's analyze it here. So if you notice, if we have our block, so they're connected with each other. The other one's a little bit smaller. Let's magnify it a bit. So you have this contact between them. Okay, so if you notice, we have B. So B is pushing it backwards and A is pushing it to the right. So this is FA or FB and this is FA. This is not part of the free body diagram anymore. It's more of like anal analysis. So let's analyze it. So there's third law of motion. So it means that if B is pushing it to the left, A is pushing it to the right. And the reason why it's not moving or it means there's no gap in between them because those forces are equal in terms of magnitude but opposite in direction. So we can basically say that f of b is the same in terms of f of a. So that's f of a. So the bracket says it indicates that it's a vector. However, I am just concerned about the magnitude and I don't care about the direction at this point. So it's telling us about the magnitude. So these two values, okay, so B is applying a certain amount of force to A, which is right here in your free body diagram, but that amount of force is the same as what A is pushing letter B. And it's in your free body diagram. Okay, so this is another scenario that I want you to remember that Newton's third law of motion where 
an action, there is an opposite equal reaction similar to your normal force. Okay, so it's similar to a normal force because those are two uh, mating surfaces that are trying to push each other. However, because of balance, uh, the amount of force that they apply to balance, so that's why it can be considered that there is no change in terms of the state of motion. So F of B is equivalent to F of A. So let us start by analyzing block A. So we can say at block A that the summation of forces along your y-axis is simply zero as we have already stat established that relationship right here earlier knowing that there's no motion. Summation of forces where going up is positive, going down is negative, so F and A minus FG of A. So we're talking about A over here, the block A. So this means that the normal force on the AX, AX block A, sorry, I got buckled. So A uh, block A is equivalent to the weight of block A. And we all know that weight is simply mass multiplied by the gravitational field strength or acceleration due to gravity. So that will be our analysis for Y in terms of A. Now, if we study and analyze the forces along the x-axis where it's zero because we have already established the relationship earlier that it's zero so we reduce the steps of writing the uh, uh, very famous equation that is net force equals mass times acceleration so here we have anything going to the right is positive which we have f minus f of A minus F of B. That is zero. And here, I want to figure out the total force, or I want to figure out my F of B. Okay, So, F of B, but I want to figure it out later. So, F of B. So we can say that F of B will be the force, applied force, minus the coefficient or minus the friction of A. But we also know that F of A, coefficient of friction, uh, is the force of friction at A is the same as the coefficient of friction, which is static friction since it's now moving. Velocities are zero, multiplied by the normal force, and normal force at A is M and G. So let's use the uppercase M and G. So now we have this relationship of F and B. However, I can still, cannot still use it because I want to express my answer or everything in terms of M. Okay. F of B is simply F minus mu S M G. There we go. Now, let's use a different color pen. Let's analyze let block B. Now, if I analyze block B, if I analyze block B, Start with a uh, summation of forces along the y-axis, which is equivalent to zero. Um, making it anything that's going upward is positive. Anything going to the left is negative. Um, upward and downward is negative. F and G of B is zero. So this will give us F N of B, the normal force in B-axis along the B or on our block B is simply equivalent to the weight of block B for the Fn of B. Just realize I forgot to write A over here so we don't get confused. Of B is simply equivalent to lowercase m multiplied by acceleration due to gravity or um, gravitational field strength. Summation of forces along the x-axis 
where it's zero as the relationship is already established earlier. So we can say anything going to the right, which is f of a, is positive minus the coefficient of friction of b. And there's no other forces acting on anything for uh, any force acting against it. So we can say that f of a is simply equivalent to f b, and we all know that that means that this is the coefficient of friction multiplied by the mass of g right here hmm. okay so now we have a better answer over here in terms of m and g and other given information unlike here f of b is still f you still need your applied force. So, based on this relationship, we can actually say that F of A, the magnitude of F of A, okay, so the applied force from B to A, or from A to B, okay, so A to B is mu s m and g so this will be our answer for letter b for letter c we also know that f of a is the same as f of b so we can say that f of b is also the same as mu s m and g So it's applying the same amount of force, quantity, okay. So they should have the same magnitude. Now, how do we calculate F of the actual force F that is applied? Okay. So now we all know that these two are the equal. So these two values are equal. So we can equate them together. By equating them together, we have mu of S multiplied by mg lowercase m is equivalent to f minus mu s m of g uppercase m manipulating our equation this will give us f is simply equivalent to mu of s m of g plus mu of s m of g and then we can further extract common from both and that is mu of s and then g and then let's multiply it m plus m so this will be our equation or some of you might put uppercase m minus or plus lowercase m will give us the same answer as we all know there is what we call the commutative property of addition so this is your answer for letter a this is your answer for letter b now what if two objects that this object is moving so it's moving at a certain direction but it never change our uh, velocity so the velocity is still going to be the same and it didn't change in terms of its magnitude okay so velocity let's say five meters per second and then it's still moving at five meters per second so let me just use this green sheet of paper this sheet of paper over here so we could all uh, put the condition that we're trying to establish here that is acceleration at x is zero acceleration at y is still zero but moving at a velocity that is constant v equals c simple all we have to do for letter a it's the same step same procedure for letter a so if we have the same procedure for letter a so we should come up with the same answer 
or letter A, okay, and that is the coefficient of static friction G multiplied by the, pro the, um, the sum of the masses. Instead of using coefficient of static friction, just change it to K because it's moving. So now we have F, coefficient of kinetic friction multiplied by G, M plus M. For letter B, the same condition where force of A, the, app, the applied force from A to B is the coefficient of friction, but this time it is kinetic multiplied by mass and the acceleration due to gravity. Letter C, because we all know that when two forces or two, two surfaces contacting together would have the same amount or same magnitude of force. The only difference is that it's opposite in direction. So we can say that it does have the same multiplied by M and then G. So we just solved two type of question, okay? Two type of question here. If your velocity initial is moving and not zero, However, you have the same magnitude of velocity. So you still have zero acceleration, but this time it is not static. 